Hi, welcome to the channel. I'm Michael with Hissy Cat Studios. Today we're going to talk about Richthofen and its origins, kind of give you a background of how it started and where we're taking it. If you like the content of our channel, please like, comment, and subscribe. And without any further delay, let's get right into it. Okay, so this is where it all kind of started about 20 some years ago. I decided to design a very large campaign collectible card game, World War One air combat game, uh, where you flew squadrons of aircraft on missions that would then have some sort of scoring system to indicate how the war was going based on success or failure in the air war. So these are some of the original cards um, that I had printed and made little boxes for, but I lost all the rules. And so there's a lot on these cards that I don't know what they stand for. Collectible card game. I actually pitched this to a uh, game publisher and got a lot of really good feedback. Uh, basically, in a nutshell, they weren't, and I wasn't trying to pitch it to them to sell it. They were some friends of mine. I wanted to get some feedback on the design. And basically what they said was, you know, there's at the time, and again, this is like 20 years ago, um, 2000, so it's about 22 years ago, that there was no market for um, these type of games. And that what I probably should do is take the core of the game, kind of boil everything down, into a smaller game that uh, I might be able to pitch to some of the war game game publishers at the time. So I ended up doing that and I created Richthofen, which I'll put a link in the description to Board Game Geek. Um, it's listed there. You can download it as a print and play. Um, but I entered it into two game design contests. One was just kind of an online one. I think there were like five or six games. It wasn't a big deal. No rewards. It was more of just sharing with the community at the time. And the other was um, KublaCon, second annual game design contest. KublaCon is a gaming convention in the San Francisco Bay Area. See, I don't remember what a lot of these things are. P, C is combat, P is pilot skill, F, no idea. But you'll notice on here, I have bank right, bank left, and climb. And that was kind of the core of my maneuver system when it was originally designed. And here it talks about advanced maneuvers, uh, I had pilots, I had actions, there's the man, uh, wingmen that you could attach, reactions, more wingmen, reactions, and advanced banking maneuver, which you'll see is in the game, barrel roll, uh, as a reaction. And this changed quite a bit. So you see I had quite a few pilots, and again, these were wingmen. They had some, they would add to your abilities. And notice the burst value is down here. You'll see that coming up on the newer cards. And uh, here's a mission card, uh, bomber escort. Um, you had engine trouble, artillery spotting with a mission, major gun damage, uh, Immelman lupus in the game, clear jam guns, balloon bursting mission, novice wingman. Balloon bursting in another location. Miss the vitals, that's in the game. Attack from below. And again, a listing of pilots. So there's quite a bit in here. And basically what you would do, as I remember it, is you'd have a pilot and you may have a wingman attached. So his combat was a two uh, and he added two combat with his wingman so his combat was now four and AF is airframe so that added two to your you took two damage to shoot down the wingman and 
think I had, uh, there, I actually had aircraft. Okay, and so it's airframe, altitude, don't remember what PC is, uh, it was minus one on initiative. Now, I don't have aircraft in the current version of the game. Um, in boiling it down, I wanted it to be more of the feel of air combat. And there's a lot of games that do aircraft and stats on aircraft very well. So I didn't need to, to really add that to the game. So I, I begrudgingly, I took them out. Yeah, see, this says copyright 2000 uh, when I print these. So that's 22 years ago, roughly. Um, low on fuel, strafing, trench tracing, Parachute was an equipment, so you could attach an equipment card onto your, your pilot with the wingman. Um, I think I had multiple versions of the pilots. Let's go back and find that Richtofen card. Because I want to say that there was like, yeah, this isn't, so there were two versions of Manfred here. You see, he's an ace, but here's experienced. Okay, so you'll notice five three or four three five, and then here it's five four seven. That's a stronger version of him. Uh, so you might start off with this one, and then you bring this one in later. But I lost all the rules. Um, so at some point, I may go back and try to um, <laughs> try to figure it out. But this was the core that then brought me to Richthofen. And like I said, I'll put a link in the description. You can go download it if you're interested in seeing what uh, the version that was actually submitted that, and going back to the game design contest at KubaCon, we ended up winning it. I mean, um, really cool. There are maybe 15, I don't think more than, much more than that, 15, 20 games. Um, and we got a lot of good feedback from that. And it was kind of cool to win and I still remember a couple of the key comments one of them that really stuck with me which is what I was trying to do with the design was um, and the, the judges were people in the industry some of them were some pretty famous game designers themselves and big companies and they said that while playing this game they felt immersed in the game the whole time they never felt like they the game took them out of being in the action and I'm kind of paraphrasing, it's been a long time. And then also our game was the first one that was submitted and they played it and because it was so short, they got to play it a lot, which I guess if you're gonna do a game design contest and you can make a game that can be played multiple, you know, in a very short period of time, uh, you're gonna get a lot more plays on it. And every other game that came in, they said was maybe a nice design and had some interesting stuff, but nothing at that point that they said kind of bumped us out of the number one spot. So we were the first in, obviously number one when you're the first one in the game design contest. And we, <laughs> we went wire to wire, apparently, which was very cool. So you can see those kind of thick, a lot of cards and a lot more cards here. French recon plane, a mission attachment. So if you were doing a recon mission, you'd attach one of these planes and Hopefully they didn't get shot down, right? There's a SPAD. German recon plane. I think I had bombers as well in here. Yeah, American bomber missing attachment. So if you're going to do a bombing run, you'd attach that. You needed to have a certain amount of uh, combat strength to complete a bombing mission. So you'd have your pilots. And you'd have, I think, a main pilot and maybe two. Uh, with their attachments, and then um, you'd attach these bombers, and then you could do your mission, and if you got to your, your mission site with enough combat strength on a bombing, you need a certain number of bombers, you could complete that mission successfully. So that's as much of it as, as I remember. But this is the grandfather of what I've been working on lately because this spawned Richthofen. And I will show you 
what I've been working on lately, which is kind of a newer version of Richthofen, which again is 20 some years old. Um, but this was the start. So as you're designing a game, sometimes you start with something really big and then you boil down what's good. So I over-designed it. It was one thing. And then we kind of designed it into something else. And I may come, I may come back to this and pull some of the cards out of here, card ideas, to put in new version, newer version of, of the game. <clears throat> now, this is a little thing for me. I like to go get used cigar boxes and put my game designs in. I've got stacks of them. Uh, in various stages, and it cost me like two, three bucks at the local liquor store. So what we have here is I like to work with little notebooks. So Rick Toffin, Bloody April, 1917. This is the newer version, and I'm calling it a maneuver system game because the maneuvers is the core of the game when it comes to air combat. And it, again, it plays very quickly, and it's very abstracted. Um, you don't need... There's no movement on the, the, the table. The game's pretty, plays pretty quickly, and it's pretty deadly. Um, so what I do is I'll put down some notes. This is for me to keep my notes, and then, you know, I kind of know what they mean. So I started off with the to-do list, and I started with, say, a non-historic campaign. Might want a flight log, some mission cards, early and late war. 1916, earlier than 1916, in 1915, I don't know if there's much you could want to gain there. Um, not with the system that I built. And maybe it could be explored with another set of mechanics. And then some ideas of 1916, 1917, 1918. Again, over-designing. And then I got a few books. I'll have uh, links in the description of the books that I have that basically covers 1916, 1917, 1918. Plus I have... Um, another book, a hard copy, uh, hardback of a book. These are all eBooks that I've used for reference. And so I kind of focused on 1917 Bloody April. It's like five weeks, six weeks long. Um, and I could do a flight log where you can track a daily mission or days on the calendar and multiple missions and start a character out that you would then go and fly whatever missions you need to do and have some sort of advancement. Um, and I'm going to have it to where you can fly either the Allied side or the German side. And then if this does well, then maybe explore a non-historic and then maybe these other two campaigns. Um, so there's potential for some more content there. And then ultimately what I want to do is go into World War II with this maneuvers system. Um, and there's a lot that could be covered. Uh, Battle of Britain, just <laughs> the bombing of Europe, um, the Pacific, carrier wars, you know, Battle of Midway, all those types of things I can fit into the maneuver system and maybe take the, the game system to another level at that point. But for World War One, this is what we're focusing on. So I wrote down a few ideas for mission types. And I've actually done trench strafing and balloon bursting. I'm in the middle of playtesting those uh, metals. Um, I think I saw, was it Hunters or Hunted? And they kind of have a page with a U-boat commander that you can put stickers on, I think, for metals. And I thought, well, that's kind of a cool idea. I'd like to put that in um, my flight log and then have requirements for you to get certain medals, and then also some non-historic medals, just for fun, right? Balloon Burster. I don't think that was an actual medal, um, but maybe achievements within the game. So you have some things to kind of shoot for. And again, these could be optional or whatever, but I'm going to flesh that out. But these are notes, so I can go through. And I'll show you a mission card for the trench and the balloon bursting, the trench strafing. And... After I did that, I went back to these pilot levels. Uh, I recruit dot five dot six veteran dot six dot seven dot eight ace, and it talks about your hand size and your and this is abstracted to some degree and your airframe, which is kind of your hit points of your aircraft. Again, the aircraft aren't detailed, 
but obviously you're in one. And your hand size kind of represents how quickly you think in the battlefield. So your hand size of three cards doesn't give you a lot of options, but as you gain a little more experience, you move up to four and then up to five. And obviously that's a huge advantage. And you'll see as when we start getting into the play testing, when I do the maneuver sy system, you'll see that. And the airframe, again, it's not any specific aircraft. Think of it more of, again, it's an abstraction of both your aircraft and that pilot's ability to fly that aircraft in such a way that it maximizes its abilities. So if you're flying it slower than maybe you should be and you're banking really simple, you're going to be easier to hit and you're going to take more damage. And that's reflected in the airframe. So flying the same aircraft, an ace can take 10 hits where a raw recruit at 0.5, and that's what the point, these numbers here represent the airframe as well. And then the recruits are three, the veterans are four, the aces are five on hand size. Um, but again, this is an abstraction of your ability to mitigate damage. You know, because of your ability to fly just in general and your hand size kind of equates to your ability to ass assess your combat situation and you have more options that you can you can do because you have more cards in your hand right now that's all I've got in the in the handbook okay or the, the notebook and I'll start showing you a couple of things that I put together here. Um, these are the two decks. There's 32 cards in the deck. I'll show you those in a second. Um, but here's two, a couple of tables I put together. And there's a few that I'm testing that are already outdated and not really interested in using. But here's trench strafing. Okay. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to start in your aerodrome. You're going to fly over the trench. You have to do four damage. And it's got one victory point. And that's probably going to change to what I call it. Um, and then you roll on an encounter table, whether you're flying allied or flying as German. They're going to be slightly different. And then you'll see here, I just have recruit, veteran, and ace, where here I've expanded it. So this is going to get redesigned. But the top part, this map, is you'll fly into this area. You'll, ro you'll flip some cards to do some damage. You'll roll for an encounter, and you might get clear skies. Once you do four damage, you can then choose to move on to the next part, which then that mission goes from one point to three points, and from three points to five points. But your encounters uh, increase the, uh, the, the chance for an encounter. And the little star here is meant to mean that you're going to have to deal with anti-aircraft. And that's handled on the individual cards. And I'll, I'll show you the anti-aircraft, excuse me, the anti-aircraft, how that comes into play. This for me just means um, when you're determining advantage, which happens a couple of times in an encounter, um, you're going to be at minus one. You're out strafing. You might get jumped by other aircraft. They have a slight advantage. And occasionally, you might see them come in and can deal with them. But more often than not, um, you're probably going to lose the advantage in the beginning. Balloon bursting works kind of the same. Uh, the little bracket here, my thoughts are I make that optional. You're flying out to the balloons. You might run some, into an encounter going over the trenches. You're going to get to enemy airspace. You gotta do six to shoot down the balloon and coming back is plus five, plus two while you're there. Uh, and again, I'll have a, a whole video on how these missions actually play out. And again, this encounter chart is gonna change. Um, you need to do six damage to bring down a balloon and it's got a base of five victory points. And again, these numbers will change when I actually start working the system for experience. But I like to put markers down so I have something to work with 
and then it changes quite dramatically after that. But this is already through a couple of iterations that I got to this point. I just decided to start videoing, you know, documenting what we do. And then based on Bloody April and looking at number of aircraft shot down in KIA and some of the outcomes, I've made this table. So it's pretty deadly. I think it was like 75% of the aircraft shot down, people were killed subsequently, something like that. This is at 80. You might survive and go POW, which kind of ends your campaign. If you're in no man's land, when you get shot down, a little less. And then in friendly, a little less. And you can end up unharmed, unharmed, or wounded, which would then keep you out of action for a bit. Again, that'll come into play in a campaign setting. And then in no man's land, unharmed, wounded, or POW. So these two you kind of are rescued by your side. And there's a chance you might get a POW again, which will then basically end the campaign. But that's part of the narrative of the story. When you create your character uh, or your pilot, um, that'll be, you know, potentially their story. So those two to start with. And I'm going to rework these. I'm actually going to go into uh, Photoshop. Um, kind of copy what I've done here. And this encounter table, I'm toying with the idea of, as, as opposed to a roll, maybe keep this as clear skies and then encounter, but then have a deck of cards that are shuffled that are pilot cards. So you then turn over and see who you're fighting. And on the ace side, I will have named um, ace, aces that you're going to fight. So, for example, here, an ace 10, that would be a Richthofen or a Falk, Falk. Uh, the, the French ace. So there'll be a handful of these, and I'll come up with what the victory points are. Obviously, if you bring down Richthofen, that's going to be a big deal, or any of the ma major aces. And this might be Lothar. He had 40 kills. He might be a nine. Okay, and then some of the ones who are in the 20 range might be an ace at the eight. And these will all be named on both sides. So there's a lot of references online and so I'm thinking I might make these into individual cards that you can shuffle and you pull it and you might get a recruit, you might get Richthofen. Or if you're flying German, same thing. You might get a named Allied Ace, uh, Albert Ball. It might be an eight or a nine. So that's work that needs to be done. And this all fits nicely in here. You know, see here's, I did a Dawn Patrol an offensive patrol, and I was going, it, it, this, I save all my stuff even though I'm kind of done with it. Um, basically everything right now is card driven. I use the 10-sided dice to keep track of airframe damage. Okay, so let me put these back in here and I'll show you some of the cards. Let me do that in another Cut this video down and keep it you know, 20, 30 minutes tops. Both decks have 30 cards and they're exactly the same. And this is a basic card layout. In this case, it says guns jam. You have an attack maneuver and defensive maneuver, bank left and dive. Some description here on what actually happens. This is a burst value. And then the game can be played versus. So you can have two people just sit down and do an air combat against each other, you and your buddy. Uh, you, you don't need to run a campaign. You don't need to do anything other than choose what level of um, experience your, your pilots are. And you two can go at it. And that was the way the game was originally designed. Then I have some notes for anti-aircraft and for solo, and that's your burst damage. Uh, each card has a unique ID. This is all put in a database, and I can create a video that shows you how I put this into a database and print a PDF file that I, I go print. And see, I've already made changes. <laughs> I printed these. Um, I'm gonna go down to the store tomorrow and print a few new cards. And then there's things like advanced banking maneuver, which is a unique type. And you'll see there's some text that goes here. There's an optional text there, and then so I got like three text blocks, uh, depending on, here's one that's using all three of them. Okay, it's an, an overdive, 
It's an advanced dive maneuver, can only be matched by another overdive, but it can match any basic maneuver. Now I'll get into how the system actually works and this will start to make sense. But when you play an overdive, you flip over top card of your deck. If it's a burst of value is two or less, your aircraft takes one airframe damage. And also if you're not matched, you're now the attacker and you fire one burst. So if, say you have the advantage on me and I play an overdive and you're unable to match the, my maneuver, then I become the attacker and I get to do one burst damage to you. Again, I'll get into a, a, another video here that kind of shows the maneuvers system working and you can see how air combat is handled with these of the 32 card deck uh, and there's a lot of uh, flavor in it it gets you the feel of air combat more of the exciting type not so much doing a historically accurate this aircraft versus that aircraft and and whatnot. I wanted it to be fast playing and give you the feel of gaining the advantage and being able to do damage to an opponent um, and constantly going back and forth, right? You might have the advantage and it gets flipped on you and you could be winning in, in, in a heartbeat and you can get shot down and killed. So it is a pretty deadly game and based on maybe some feedback when I get to some people other than me and my buddy play testing it, um, it can be toned down. Although I like it the way it is, but then again, I like hard challenging games. And there, the, this, I'm going to say this is a pretty fun game to play, in my opinion. Of course, I'm a little biased. Anyway, um, thank you for watching. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. You know the routine. And if you've got any thoughts or comments, put them in the, the comment section. I'll do my best to respond to everybody.